Oh my god, my brother's just sent me a screenshot saying, so this isn't you either. Joe Achilles official. <laughs> That's funny. Is, that is you. That is, well, that's what I've just changed my so name to. If you screenshot that later, yeah. we can green screen it on the channel and say, you could say, my brother's just sent me this. Yes. Again, it's just all topics. Green screening's great on TikTok. Goodbye. Right. Okay. Are we we're recording, Pat? <laughs> Shall I put my phone down? Yeah, Joe, put your phone down. We're I'm recording. I'm just on TikTok. One second. <laughs> recording. I'm on TikTok. What? Tick. Tick. TikTok. 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 That's why he's here to teach us about TikTok. Petrol. No, it's <laughs> petrol ped official. <laughs> right, put your phone down. We're starting. Yes, yeah, yeah. One second. I'm going to okay. put it on mute. I've got Three, to keep an eye on TikTok. Two, one. Easy now. Easy now. I thought we just did start. Surely yeah, we have started. Use... Oh, we are. Definitely yes. started. Yeah, we okay. definitely started. Hey, guys, welcome back <laughs> to the Drive Talk podcast. A slightly manic start, I know, but Joe and I are basically being given a massive learning curve education on TikTok. You could say that. By our special guest. By our special guest. Holy. <laughs> Welcome to the channel, George. Best known, George's Car Media. I suppose, yeah, that's, that's what some people know me as. GCM, George's Car Media. The yep. guy that stands next to a copper on socials, basically. <laughs> the UK's biggest snitch. I've heard that one too. At, um, hold on, no, really? the best one was yeah. the, be the road safety one. The biggest road safety outlet. So we are officially the largest road safety platform in not only police history, but social media history. Wow. Um, coming up to, don't quote me on this number, 1.9 billion views on the hashtag road safety. Wow. Which, wow. Yeah, you can't really argue you've seen anywhere else. So. Yeah. Well, I think I think what you've done, I, I was in trouble with the law a few years ago, back in 2018 for a speeding offence. Um, and what happened to me uh, didn't do any positives to, uh, to the situation for me for people that watch my channel, for the Derbyshire police, it just didn't didn't produce any positives, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, they, you know, we could have handled that situation so much better. But what you guys talk about, and I know this is just only a part of what your channel is, but I just find it really interesting, fascinating, and and it's a great sort of delve into stuff that oh, we don't mate, necessarily we, know. We've got so much to talk about. So yeah. let before we crack into the detail, there may well be people watching this who've not come across any of your videos right. on well multi-platform right yeah. so what we're all platforms just just explain your kind of story where when did you start making videos what platform and, and and how have you evolved to the point where you are today and then we can deep dive into some of the really cool stuff okay so i'll keep it really simple my name is george i'm 33 um <laughs> originally from <laughs> i'm from herefordshire Kids. but now live in the southwest exeter um in short i was a personal trainer got injured, started making some videos on cars and found, as we all do, that cars are quite expensive to fix. Um, what I really liked was a friend of mine was quite handy with his car and as a result used to show me that we well, don't need to go to the garage, we can actually go to a place called Euro Car Parts, buy that part and fit it on the car and save all the labor. And it just kind of, that light bulb moment of, oh my God, surely more people need to know about this. So we made a video and it was something simple like the best ways to fit your induction kit or something, something along those lines. Yeah. Anyway, those videos didn't really do very well. We then went to some car meets um, and I started pointing at the stuff that my viewers said was exciting, which was all of the burnouts, the pops and bangs and all that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, as we all know, that stuff might be really exciting to watch, but young drivers with too much horsepower, too much confidence and not very much experience, unfortunately, uh, sometimes causes these accidents. And these are the ones that would make the headlines in the press. Um, I made all these videos. They did occasionally well. Um, they did occasionally do well, um, sorry, but I got a knock on the door from a police officer during lockdown and- You I mean, weren't partying outside no, with all your partying, mates. No, yeah. I had two friends with me. Eight um, people in the house. I had two friends with me. Um, this wasn't during the lockdown itself, it was in that lockdown period. Yeah. And I got a knock on, the, knock on the door and my friend comes up to me and says, oh, there's two coppers outside. So I immediately <laughs> had a panic attack. Um, anyway, he comes in and says, look, we're not here for anything dodgy. We simply want to let you know that uh, we've seen your videos online and we're really struggling with a very vulnerable road user group, which is young drivers. How would you feel on the pretenses of making a video all about road safety? So I thought it's quite boring. I mean, who would want to do that, right? And then um, he said, well, we can do whatever we like. And we thought we'd go down the car, the car mods route. And we did. And that first video went viral and we never looked back. We've now obviously since put it on all platforms and stuff, but yeah, that's how it started in so it literally short. was a knock on the door the quite cool nice. thing about that is that's the police being proactive being proactive which isn't something they're 
necessarily known for. Well, no, a lot of people do try and think it's funny and say, oh, well, he shouldn't be doing that during lockdown. It obviously wasn't during lockdown. But the reason why I think it's so amazing is MPS Owen Messenger, Owen, the guy that I filmed with, had to build his own door and walk through it. This idea didn't exist. There is yeah. not a single person in history with the police that has ever done this with an online social media creator, influencer, or whatever you want to call it. And I just think it's really cool that he went out of his way, knocked on my door, and made something happen that has turned into something so crazy. And I'm obviously mm. so blessed and so grateful that he did. But yeah, honestly, big respects to him. He deserves so much more respect than he's currently getting. And having, having spoken to uh, Devon and Cornwall Police actually a few years ago, and we had an idea about going and doing some videos around driver training and, yeah. and pursuit driver training. And the guy I was talking to um, actually was one of the guys that did all the firearms pursuit training. And in the end, it was just it just ended up being too difficult. Mm. Too much red tape. And yeah, and so it's, it's a, knowing just a little snippet of that to see what you guys have done is really impressive. Honestly, I've got to give those credits to Owen. There are so many hurdles that we've got to jump through. And the best way to describe it is I would film a video, I would roughly edit the draft, and that's probably got to be approved by six or seven, maybe even 10 people, yeah. before it gets to the point that Owen's like, okay, we've got the go ahead, now I can do the proper editing. There's no point in me putting hours of edits into, yeah. into one video for it to then be declined by whoever. Yeah. But now um, we've, you know, we've got the respect from all these people now, so the, you know, the, the streamlined effect of getting these videos uploaded is a lot easier now than it once was. And um, we must say, we did invite Owen today, but again, one, it's a long way from to come yeah. during a working police day. Yeah. And also just, it becomes quite, a, to talk live about stuff. And, and then yeah, there's all that kind of- It's a lot uh, more difficult than the viewers might give yeah. credit for. And I think, you know, you've got to think as well is, can the Devon and Cornwall police um, justify paying a police officer to come out of his way onto a podcast that they may or may not know and again that's no disrespect to you guys they might not know who you guys are mm -hmm. they also can't govern what's said um, and they also don't have the creative control over the edit so if the narrative was not to their taste they of course can't control that that's up to mm -hmm. you and also if there is one opportunity to prove to the police that a podcast was a good use of Owen's time is your demographic the correct audience and because you guys have slightly more respectable older audience than maybe we do they probably thought well unless they're young drivers we're not keen so owen would love to but unfortunately it's just hard to get the police for that again that's just a demonstration of what you've done so so what you're so, so that's where you get to kind of making videos about road safety with or you have one video go go nuts yeah. where do you go from there then because the, the we just had lunch together and and <laughs> And um, George and I, we, we were on a, uh, the Michelin. In fact, the, the last pub we were talking about, our Myra thing, we were at that event last yeah, week right, yeah. and we chatted quite a bit. And the bit that amazes me is the time frame in which you make the content because you don't have Owen's time a great deal. Joe and I used to, you know, give us, a, we need a couple of days probably to make a video, hmm. one video yeah, on a yeah, car. Yeah. You have one day to make a month's worth of videos. It's so funny because we get so many comments and we have, we probably have five or six comments that are just a bit of a broken record that we get them from everyone at all times. And no matter what video we upload, we'll get the same the same questions. Um, but the main one we get is, what a waste of taxpayers' money. Right. And the second one is always, why are we paying a police officer to go out and make silly TikTok videos? Let me just say, all of them are done in our spare time, for a start. We probably film once a month on average. Occasionally, we might fit in two if I'm lucky. But we film loads of videos in one day, usually from about 10 o'clock till about half two, and Owen gets teasy and tired because he's old. And then... <laughs> Wait, he's not... He's, he's, he's not that old. He's the same age as you. I'm so oh, sorry. Oh, is he? That's not a dick. I, went, I love Owen, right? Owen's a great age, he, mate. He needs to go uh, with age, with age comes experience. That's <laughs> all I'll say. I'm only joking. He's got much more serious things to do than to stand with me all day. And he gets, you know, my ADHD, I think, probably drives him a little bit crazy. Um, but we, in a four and a half hour window, we film loads of TikToks, loads of short forms. Sometimes it might be YouTube. Sometimes it might be photos. I then stretch and edit those to make it look like we filmed over the space of a month. You know, I, I think that's why people assume that he's wasting a lot of time is that they're seeing him on the For You page so often that they think, what on earth does he do? Does he actually do any police work? But the yeah. thing is, that's that that's the difference between the real world timeline yeah. and the social media timeline. Just if you're watching, they're not yeah. the same, everybody. <laughs> no. <laughs> not you get all the time. Uh, we've well, talked Tim, about this before. Schmitt, someone Tim's like Schmitt, it's like, oh, especially during those lockdown years, where Tim was very smart and it would be like, oh, I can see a lockdown coming. So he went to the States, so he went to here and there. And of course, all his videos are so delayed. Oh, what are you doing traveling oh. during the 
It's like, well, I'm not. The video's not live. Like, you know, I, like... I, got, I created him a, a real headache because he'd come back from the States and we had dinner at the um, Good, Goodwood yeah. Hotel. Yeah. And I put, a, I put a photograph on my, on my um, Instagram and we got so many comments because the day before a video he put up of him in America. Mm. Right? So everyone's like, oh, how did he get back from America? You need to isolate for a week when you get back from America before you can meet anybody. And Tim's like, I've been back from America for three weeks. How dare you have food? How <laughs> yeah, dare you Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay, so, that, so, so, and then format-wise, so one of the things we might have to have a chat about is um, platform-wise, mm -hmm. the thing that we've, Joe and I found massively interesting so uh, there's lots of different social media platforms there are, yeah, right? so many. and at the end of the day they all do the same thing they all allow you to share photographs and video with mm -hmm. your subscribers yeah however and it's a big however the way you use those platforms the way you create content for those platforms and the way you especially edit what you mm -hmm. do is vastly different so yeah. i'm going to start with me my primary platform is youtube mm -hmm. long format widescreen 15. You were MySpace. Oh yeah, oh, oh, yeah. MySpace. Friends reunited, mate. Bebo. That was me. Yeah. Bebo. <laughs> oh my god. Remember high five? Yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't. Gosh. Let's see, I remember those. Yeah. yeah. Friends reunited with the Where first one. We used to poke each other. Was that Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> was that Bebo? Was it? Was yeah. that not Bebo? I can't remember. Yeah. I can't. Remember. I poked you, which I always Facebook thought was a bit was poking. Yeah. Yeah. Our face, yeah. Facebook poking. Bebo was love like... hearts, and we used to get them all added up on your homepage. That's so you, right. You would seem to be more popular from people you've never met. <laughs> That's really changed, has it? <laughs> if you think about it too much. So, so you were YouTube. Uh, yeah. So YouTube, uh, and then Facebook. Um, only really for the last year I've been actively on that, and then I, I struggle on Instagram, mm. and, and I, I have tried uh, TikTok with little consequence uh but you're about to change my mind on that one yeah you're similar but your instagram is way bigger and way more in terms of engagements and stuff you quite got quite a successful instagram profile i'm quite active on stories with with instagram but i'd say you post probably 10 times more than i do main posts right but because i'm very i'll post like one or two main posts That's a week. it takes you four hours to it takes picture. it takes me a week to, to edit one uh, and I've got OCD, so I have to have a still followed by real, followed by still, followed by real. So even if I've got like, oh my god, that's like half the press, or oh, I can't post it because it's a still, and I, and I need to post a real first. Wow. Um, and I, I know that he's, he's he's nervously itching his beard. He's like, I, can't, I don't, I just. And uh, but yeah, earlier on we were talking about basically a couple of days ago, I discovered someone was impersonating me on TikTok, which I've since found out is a very common thing. Um, and it happens all the time because it's an easy way for other. Well, it's the best form of flattery, and I think it's just perspective. If someone copies you, yes, and we've had it. We have had people directly go out and do what we do on socials, and they've even dressed up as police officers. And <laughs> they have been frankly quite rude and disrespectful. Oh wow! To the point that we're arguing, we're saying to what well, we were saying at the time to TikTok head office, please verify us. Yeah, because these people are posing as us. They're laughing and giving off false advice, saying you should speed, you Which should is dangerous. Drive. Yeah. yeah. And then these impressionable young people think it's us yeah. and they're like, oh wait, so now we're allowed to do that. So uh, again, there needs to be a voice of reason. Yeah. So it's okay that people are copying you. You just need to make sure that you use it to your advantage. I okay. think Joe was annoyed because the person copying him had more followers than he did. A lot more on TikTok. <laughs> Young guy, better look him. So, <laughs> yeah, and then obviously George is there and he's like, no, 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 no you're looking in the wrong way. You know, TikToks to go, and me and Ped are both sitting there going, nah, nah, mate, nah. So, so how how many views have you had on YouTube? Do you know, off the uh, I only know because I've just cracked two hundred something thousand. Yeah, sixty-seven, nearly sixty-eight thousand views. Sixty-eight million views. Sixty-eight so. million views. Right, I'm like, I don't remember, fifty or something million. Uh, how many views have you had on TikTok, dude? I think I, I, can I answer YouTube first. I don't necessarily. I think twenty-ish. Million. on youtube yeah, yeah so maybe a little bit under but um cross-platform 1.9 billion but again like that's small numbers compared to the likes of ksi and these people yeah but they're a monetized views they're very different and i think all of our big views were before tiktok became monetized anyway and irrespective to to finances short form content just doesn't pay the same way that youtube did so had that been on youtube then there may be an svg outside but there's currently a yeah, ford focus yeah, I'd rather have a Ford Focus. That's quite good. <laughs> yeah, that, I yeah, love Joe, it. <laughs> Joe's not a massive Lambo fan, no, to be honest. Yeah. So you're, so then, so you're, what, what's your biggest, biggest? So platform? we're at 1.14 mil on TikTok. We're at followers or followers. You, you, wow. And then at 270 something, I think, on Instagram, and then 128 on YouTube. Wow. 
Very impressive. Ish. But your main, okay, yeah. So, well, anyway, long story short, over a half hour lunch sitting just over there. By the way, we're at Podium Place. I don't know if we yeah, talked yeah. about that, yeah. but we're in the wonderful roastery. Um, we were sitting over there having a nice lunch and a couple of coffees. And George has single-handedly basically convinced me and Ped that we need to really give TikTok a go. We're yeah. not too old. Um, our, and the audience on TikTok isn't too young. And um, I think we're both quite excited about it. We've gone from being very cynical to very... Well, I'll be excited when I get like more than two followers. Yeah. I think my challenge is that it's not a platform that I've engaged with. And that's, it's like all of these things. You've mm. got to create regular content specific for that platform. It's, mm. it's, and all of them, you know, that, that's always the, the trick. And I don't know what about Joe, but I'm, I always struggle to have enough time of the day just to do YouTube on its own, let alone adding mm. another platform to do that. Well, one question that I always try and say to people, and as, as I'm sure you do too, a lot of the people that we meet and take photos with, the first thing they do is, how do I get big on YouTube? Mm. How do I get big on socials? How do I do this? How do you afford these nice cars? How do you do whatever? And I appreciate that every creator has got a different understanding of wealth and you know money and all this kind of stuff. But one thing that we all have in common is that we know how to turn a brand or at least make a brand out of nothing, right? So whether you decided to work for Podium Place or this company over there, you would be able to in some way or another make them relevant online. You just happen to be good at YouTube. Maybe you're better at YouTube and Instagram and I happen to be better at TikTok, for example. But I learned from a lot of people too. And Jack McNeil is someone that I always use in these conversations because he hit the nail on the head. He took a really bad car and he thought, well, I wanna turn this into something fun. And the best way to do that was to engage with the audience. So he simply said, whatever modification you guys like the most in the comments, I'll do. And again, anyone can say that, but he actually committed. Wow. So when they said, all right, but you won't do pink wheels, he went out and did pink wheels. <laughs> but better than that, and again, he did the fluffy, fluffy dice and he did the exhausts and all these exciting spoilers and stuff. But what really works for him is he had like a, almost like a blueprint of how his video was laid out. And it worked so well because as we all know, and we all share this common ground is storytelling is key. And you have to bring your audience along the idea of a story. And this is why I always try and say that that's what we've done with the police and that's what you've done with your videos and so on and so forth. But the creators that do well are just the ones that are effectively good at telling stories. And that's why I find it so inspiring. And this is what I love about TikTok. And I, I'll take this on board and mention this on this podcast that I showed my Mark II channel to my mum last night who didn't know I was doing it. And she disappeared for about 40 minutes and responded later on and just said, it's so nice, it's so personal. And it just feels so chatty. And I feel like I'm just sat there having a chat with my friend. And that's what TikTok is bringing to your audience that you can't do at the moment. So although you look at it like it's for young people, all right, you could do dances, I wouldn't recommend it, but what you could instead do is allow your viewers to comment and feel like they are personally being heard by you. Yep. The, the nice thing, uh, and I haven't, I haven't tried it yet because literally you only showed me about 10 minutes before we set this podcast up, is on, on YouTube, I've always made a thing of replying to as many comments as I mm. can by it's writing a comment. Yeah. And I get like thirty five thousand comments a year, something like that. And I reply, I, I, I interact, I interact with all wow. of them. Yeah. Right? On TikTok, I can do a video response to a comment. Mm -hmm. That's ace. Yeah, it's amazing. And and I, only found, I didn't so know you could do that until no, like literally ten minutes ago. Just the way that my ADHD works is, I, I find it very difficult to do all the typing and yeah. write and stuff. I get distracted, but a video has got my one hundred percent of my attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So me allowing allowing myself to respond with a video means you're much more likely to get a response from me than you would do had it been a question that I had to type. I'm exactly uh, yeah. With Instagram DMs, and this is not to encourage you to DM me. Um, DM if, Joe Achilles. <laughs> is uh, I will a lot of the time send a voice note back. Yeah, so. because I I find yeah I find it well more personal but easier to explain. You've hit the nail on the head. Yeah. More personal. Yeah. If, if I were random Joe blogs and I got a voice note, I'd feel so much better at myself yep. because you've taken the time out of your day to respond. Whenever, whenever I'm listening to a voice note at home, Trace is always like, that'll be Joe, isn't it? <laughs> Have you, do you ever just have a conversation on the phone? No. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a voice note and not a text. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, so that's, that's just so easier. Yeah. 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 But that's why we're creators. We're, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the way we're wired. Yeah, so that's yeah. okay. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I wrote a little, um, a little, not an agenda, but some of the things I wanted to kind of talk about. And one of the things that we've talked about before, Joe alluded to right at the beginning of the podcast, is just general driving standards mm -hmm. online. Um, and oh, wow. it's, one of those, it's one of these conversations where um, 
I don't want to sit here and say I'm better than anyone else or those people are responsible or name names because that's not that's yeah, not well, I'm not about that either. So let me just premise on the GCM channel. We never use anyone by example. No. Yeah. Unless and you've applied for that position, you want us to, we will yeah, never. Yeah, exactly. And, and so we're not going to do that. But for me, I look at some, and I'm just going to use the, the loose term creators. Mm -hmm. So that's not, I'm not platform specific. I just look at the way some creators behave when they are around cars mm -hmm. and whether that's for me pointing a camera at someone in a car show driving like an idiot whether that's driving like an idiot themselves whether that's doing point of view shots when they're doing a launch control clearly holding an iphone in their hand mm -hmm. or, or just generally just driving in a way that is dangerous and unsafe and unfortunately it seems to be something that gets picked up on as cool and popular and and it does my head in yeah i understand and uh, you know so what are your thoughts on that and because uh, one of the i know one of the things that you kind of try and do is especially with the police and so on is to help that but i i've actually sent you a couple of clips in the past of mm -hmm. of people driving like complete lunatics and i've been quite disheartened by the response because it's quite difficult for the police to do anything about it yeah um so let me just say i, I was part of that years ago you know i've lost my license and i was at those car meets doing the bad behavior that we talk of as, as most um, of us younger yeah, people yeah, yeah. do yeah. as well um, but also as a creator when you make a video in you know for example interviewing i don't know, make up a name here kyle on his cool car might get a thousand views but if i film someone doing a burnout and it gets a hundred thousand views mm. you can clearly see why i come back to the next car meet and only film the burnouts mm. because people are getting more traction off. It's like crashes at Nürburgring. And again, yeah. we live in this weird world where people's self-esteem is based on their following and people that do go balls to the wall with making social media content, when you are receiving loads and loads of views off the back of something, it's like a drug. Your dopamine reward, reward scheme is being effectively rewarded by all of this bad behavior. So mentioning no names, people that point at um, cars at car shows, if that's what's paying your bills, you can understand why they come back and do it again. Mm. Because they know that if they don't do that, then it's gonna, um, gonna be difficult. I know someone in the industry that does that, and I will tell you that he's very aware of um, you know, the change of behavior, and he wants to do his best to move away from that stereotype and, and govern the safe driving too. But again, it doesn't mean it's easy. No. Um, we struggle too because we see that you know you've got to remember owen watches social media too and he knows these people that do this stuff and we will never use them on a video but again like what can we do it's very difficult but one thing that i will say and i will repeat what he told me is that george trust me we're not stupid we know what's going on and the wall is not being pulled over our eyes it's just a matter of time I think so the, the, the yeah. thing that frustrates me and i'm sat next to someone who who was at the wrong end of it right yeah. Yes, you see some of this behavior where it's it's either there's a speedo visible and there's like someone doing 80 odd miles an hour or they've blurred out the speedo as if that and they put has the mexico uh, picture over it it's oh just yeah yeah, yeah really as if it's going to make uh, a difference and, and there's no consequences at all mm -hmm. yet you were doing something fairly innocuous and you got absolutely hauled over the coals yep over a period of you know a year or so uh, and I just there's no consistency at all no I think yeah I, I, don't know, I know that's what makes you and me more frustrated when we see things like that and nothing being done about it and people repeatedly doing it when I know personally what I went through during that year over something that is comp very trivial and actually was never ever reported to the police from a public point of view I wasn't in the public eye it was some it was a very peculiar uh, mm -hmm. scenario of events that turned into what it did we did a podcast on it by the way so look yeah. back in our um, in our previous episodes yeah you actually told me over over your education from me on how to split a g so, <laughs> by the guinness uh, he'd never heard the term split the g i've never guinness. heard that either oh I should, uh, there's a great so tiktok on my there. channel um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get be. to that in a minute we'll get yeah. to that in a minute but i know no, because you weren't it was weird that one with you and yeah, it, you know, when you look at uh, that's what frustrates me. You look at something and you're like, "How can that be okay?" And that not being prosecuted? Well, yeah. you drove a, a, a you know a supercar up a nice bit of road with a GoPro on the back, not yeah. driving that quick. No, you I, ended up. I mean, the bottom line is, I was speeding, uh, and and I shouldn't have been. 
Um, but it was misinterpreted as look at me, I'm going fast, which was definitely not the point uh, into whatever it became. But I just think I wish that at the time um, I could have uh, been given a chance to try and turn that into a positive. And I think a lot of people did learn from it. A lot of people in the industry, Front a lot of journalists me. that I know, <laughs> um you know since spoke to me and said oh it's it taught us a lot about how we shoot things how we film things you know even to this day like all my clips even when i know i'm doing the speed limit now and i'll always purposely choose roads that make the car look faster i.e twistier stuff and 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 as long as i'm aware that i'm at the speed limit and not over it then i feel safe but i'm still always a bit nervous if I put a clip in that looks like it's over the speed limit, that I might somehow get understandably get done for it, and yeah, but so I think it has made it has done some good of what happened to me to other journalists and content creators. But then others, you just think, uh, yeah, it, it you do sit there, I sit there and wonder. Someone's invested that would have cost the police and all their private investigators and stuff a lot of money to investigate me over essentially nothing in the public eye at the time when you look at some of these people that are doing 80 down a bus lane in a town or, and you just think, but, but then, then you start understanding the red tape and the amount of work that needs to go into investigating every single one of these, the kickback you get and all the rest of it. Um, right. But it is, it's just an interesting, mm. I think, and also these social, I think the social platforms need to be, I think that's what it stems down to as well is, you know, during COVID, you couldn't say anything COVID related without something coming on the screen or you being thrown off a platform. So we know that the AI or the technology in, in these in these platforms are very capable of getting rid of stuff very quickly if they don't Community want to. guidelines, that, that is yes. now a thing on TikTok big time. Okay, so that's- If you do anything dangerous, you're done. You're done. Yeah. But then you do yeah, see like, you know, you see on Instagram, especially you see like people dying or the horrible, horrible accidents that you know someone's definitely done. Facebook's All, the worst for that, in my opinion. Yeah, Facebook, yeah, is it? I, Real bad. Okay. Yeah. Like, as in- Really graphic, bad. yeah. Yeah. But then you think, how's that? If, if they can pick up on something with the C19 or Cope, it's gone. It's like they must, there needs to be more. And again, with the speeding clips, it should be like, you know, this person is showing that it's some of it's so obvious that it just needs to be pulled down immediately and taught these guys and girls need to be taught a, a, a gentle lesson because they're not just losing their license or getting fined or whatever. They're just being pulled off a platform and warned. It's almost mm -hmm. like, no, stop that. Do you know what I mean? Not let it get out of control. Because as you say, George, these people chase the numbers and straight away, if you're seeing a good result on something, you're only going to continue to chase whatever that recipe is, right? I think the problem is a lot of them know, they know the game, right? They know what the police need in order to go after yeah. you legally. Yeah. And, and the, the, the police, we're not gonna, I'm not going to say what the police need because then just, mm. but they, they need a, you know, a fairly large amount of information to be able mm -hmm. to, to, to prosecute a particular video. Yeah, no, of course. And and these people know, but it, it just, it does my head in that there needs to be some kind of, I don't, I don't want to sit here sounding like some kind of old grumpy, you know. Too uh, late. No, I get where oh, you're coming yeah. from, but there, there's there's three things I can add. So on the topic of Joe speeding and, and you mentioning um, other creators and stuff. So number one, the fact that we all make mistakes in life, no matter what that may be. And we're yeah. in a very blessed position to not only know the mistake, but also evolve from it. And I think what is a really good judge of character is how you choose to take that mistake you've made yeah. and move on from it. Yep. You could be a screw you system. Yeah, blah, 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 I'm not wrong. Or you could be like, you know what, as you said, I was speeding. Yeah. Frankly, I did learn from it. It was a ball ache, but look, I'm a better man now. And as a result, I'm gonna push that to my audience. Yeah. So amazing. Um, and yeah, the, the, the world that we live in is pushing numbers off the back of bad behavior. And there are community guidelines for dangerous driving but if people are being rewarded, for example, with views for wearing less clothes, they will continue to wear less clothes. If men continue to holler at ladies for doing the same, then of course it instigates the same behavior. And again, it's we do need to take some responsibility. And although that sounds slightly off topic, I think as a driver, it takes responsibility for us to be well behaved while we're still saying the police need to be kinder to us. So the police need to have more respect for us. And I know that again, this might sound like a somewhat of a tangent, but the police need to be respectful to us and understand that it's not that easy and people do make mistakes. And as a result, not penalize us for stuff that we would warrant is a bit silly. But at the same time, we need to hone in our behavior. You're very blessed to drive a Ferrari or a supercar. And there are people that would kill to do that kind of thing. But also, 
while I'm sitting here saying that you should be sensible and be smart and maybe not speed, those cars are designed for a reason. And I think anyone that were to drive the same car would have the same struggle. Mm. So sometimes I do feel like these people are being a bit of a Karen because if you were in the same position, would you maybe struggle just as much? Probably. Mm. Um, I tend to jump down the throats of people that jump on the bandwagon of hating these large creators because like, my argument is always that if you had a camera in your face 24 seven, you would make mistakes too. Yep. But it's so easy to be like, I hate him because of what he said in that one podcast. All right, well, do you remember that time you said that thing when you were drunk? Yeah, you're lucky no one caught that on camera. Again, so many people mess up, but they judge these creators for making mistakes. And there are millions of people that speed. And yet every one of them was probably in the comments calling you an idiot yeah. for speeding. <laughs> and yet just because they weren't caught, yeah. it gives them this sense of entitlement. So social media world's a bit screwed up, but I, I must premise that we all make mistakes. And although that's in different ways in life, yeah. it's about what you do when you- It's like me it. writing off TikTok. <laughs> an hour ago <laughs> and now i'm sitting here trying That's to choose okay. a thumbnail for uh, i did that i was i remember the exact <laughs> scenario i was on the sofa and my mate lou walked in and he said you should do tiktok and i was like not a chance it's an app that young people dance on not for me and then i took one of my videos and clipped it and it got hundreds of thousands of views in the first day and i got like thirty thousand followers in one day and i was like what but again, that doesn't happen to everyone. And you could argue that was a little bit so of that. Didn't to me. But that was using content I'd already made. So there was no work involved. Yeah. I just took a clip that I'd already edited and uploaded it. Yep. And then here we are, you yeah. know, thousands of videos later. Um, question. So what's Owen's view on, on generally the automotive YouTuber filming while they're driving and creating content while they're driving? I think he's like anyone. He just he just knows that it's way out of control at the minute. And again, like we said earlier, people are instigated to do the naughty stuff because it gets not even no, not even naughty stuff. Just driving down a road, talking to a camera. Because I often get um, comments about how, you know the legalities of that. And and to put it out there: if the camera's fixed and you're not touching the camera, there's nothing so illegal about. I there. covered it on my Mark II page the other day, um, and this is taking what Owen has told me. I know Owen would say it's probably best that you don't do it at all. But I can also see that if you were sat down here in a personal state, you'd probably say, I don't condone it, but if you're going to do it, start the camera when your car is stationary, yeah. when you're safe in neutral handbrake up, and do not turn off that camera or touch it until you've pulled up again and turned off your engine. That's my understanding. Too. So it's not about leaning over and touching, because sometimes these creators leave the edits in and they don't realize that you can see them touching the screen and you can see them taking their, their eyes off the road. And, and Owen always says, if we believe you to be driving without you care and attention, that's yeah. an offence in itself. Yeah. But, but which in today's world is absolutely ridiculous because that car out there that I'm driving and the car that you're driving, got a big plasma TV all you can do the is touch the screen. And, and to do that, you have to sit forward in the seat and you have to steady your hand Agreed. on the top of the screen because otherwise it's, Agreed. it's crazy, isn't it? But like, the argument is that's been approved by yeah. people higher up than you yeah. that have made the correct testing. Yeah. And you mounting an iPhone oh, yeah. on the screen is yeah. not It's not. Is it the, yeah. the new Volvo uh, infotainment system and driver attention system, if you interact with the sat-nav or, or the screen at all, yeah. even just to like turn the air conditioning or whatever, yeah. the attention monitor tells you off for not paying attention, wow. even though you're actually yeah. interacting with the infotainment system. Well, I think it all comes down to the different, you know, we're all very competent drivers that, that spend a lot of time in cars. Uh, we happen to love cars and that's why we're all sitting here today. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a slightly different uh, passion around every time we get in our car, even if we're driving now to buy a pint of milk, it's a whole thing for us. There's still a tiny bit of excitement jumping in the car, going down the shop to buy a pint of milk. doesn't matter, I get to drive my car. So we take pride in what we're doing. We focus on what we're doing and we pay attention to what we're doing because we don't want to wrap it around a lamppost. We don't want to run any, anyone over, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas a lot of people, and I'd say the majority of people on the road out there today, use cars as a form of transport and that's it. It's their form of transport. And unfortunately, what comes off the back of that is they just have no interest in anything apart from that car taking from A to B. Yep. And the problem with that is some people are competent and they've got good spatial awareness. So therefore, they're automatically half decent drivers. Some people just aren't, have no idea what is going on. I mean, they you, they couldn't walk through you know this room without knocking into things. You put that into a car. So I think... You, you see it, I see it all the time when I'm parked at a set traffic lights. So people, there are there are people like ourselves who could quite easily talk to a camera and, you know, a, a, and, 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 and pay more attention to the road and what's going on in front of us 
than than those people I'm talking about could ever do without the camera there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So and, and, and I think it's all. But yeah, it's all down to the, the, it's the, a it's a practice thing when you get used to it. Yeah, also, practice. I don't know what you're like. When when I am doing a piece to camera, my my attention radar is on. He's on like on. turned up to twelve. <laughs> yeah. You know? I mean, I'm, I'm, I've, I've got pretty good um, perception and and hazard avoidance. I'm a, a lot. I'm France I'm driver. I'm a, How I'm many a, in France? Because I'm an advanced driver. Oh, I, told, I told you that I'm an advanced driver. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that my car's got no air con? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but did no, he tell you about his advanced driving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course he did. Yeah. It's so much so that his his entire windscreen and his boxer is covered up with advanced driver stickers. He can hardly see through the windscreen now, but that doesn't matter because he's an advanced think driver. Defence, George. <laughs> you know, come on the pod. Anyway, but anyway, right. Moving on. <sighs> um, can I just say on that topic of some people not caring? Um, it's not, yeah, my my girlfriend's a very safe driver. Yeah, but, um, she's your typical. The car's a car, gets me to work. Yeah, I like the fact that it looks nice, but she doesn't understand my love for it. But what I will give her credit for is that yeah. she loves to see me excited about cars. Yeah, and that's what I really like. She respects that there's a passion there. Yeah, she doesn't have to be involved in it, but I, I'm determined to give her at least a ten percent increase in car knowledge while we're together. Hopefully this lasts this for while we're together. Yeah, one second. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. As long as it may last, I'm hoping that I can. As long somewhat, as it will last. Yeah, as long as it will last, yeah. I'm hoping that we can improve that interest just yes. even a little bit. Yeah, just to see. But no, at the minute a red car could go past, whereas for me it'd be oh it's a four five eight. You know, again. Yeah, yeah. it's just it's the way that our brains work, isn't it? So now next thing I want to talk about is car mods because we we did topic. a video or a pod not that long ago and we we talked about modifications and um you know the the different the different types from like quite low grade ones to oh my gosh it's a supra oh, oh they oh. a mark for supra as we're, oh, as we're filming it looks it's a, a, it's a black yeah. car i wish you'd find outside the window that would yeah. be nice oh god yeah, lovely oh oh, oh. Do, 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 do. <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> Well, such nerds. Nerds. Hey, that was such a really nerds. good transition yeah. there. Um, so yeah, so car mods. Now, I've seen you've done videos on this with Owen. We have. About car mods. Now, is it safe to say that there are some very popular car mods that people might actually have on their cars that are completely illegal? 100%. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> can, we do, can we do our top five? We can do that. No problem oh, at all. I hope so, I, 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 I I'm like, I know, I'm like I'm, I'm. <laughs> can, can I ask you what you think number one would be? Of be, just think be about a, it. a number plate. Out. A number plate. I'm going to say tinted windows. Oh, actually, yeah, I'll go with that. Thing is, there's a varying degree of that. Whereas I'm talking about a modification that, categoric fact, is illegal. Oh, red num red mud flaps. <laughs> I don't Bang. believe that you two would have ever had to do this to your cars because I don't. I think that I don't. I just don't see you having done it. Oh, so one cat. Perfect. Oh, because spot on. Was it categorically? So, so I so actually I decatted my catering. Oh, so, I had a cat bypass valve. I literally took the cat off and just put a pipe in there. So let's just let's just premise to anyone watching, in case you want a little life lesson. Uh, if your car came with a cat from the factory, it has to have one at all times because the car needs to be able to pass its MOT 365 days a year. Right. It's not, I've got an MOT and now my car's got a fresh MOT. It's if the police want to MOT it, then that it needs to be so that means you, what you can't just put the cat on for MOT day and then take it off people the do day. that they say they've got their friendly MOT tester but the number one mod that people do to make their car sound faster and get more horsepower is a decal I did not know that so the um, commonly known as the more legal version of that is a sports cat you yep. get 100 cell or a 200 cell but again that's exactly <laughs> what I did on my car but my car's been off the road for a period of time and we've since found out that you can only do that provided it's EC approved, which basically means 98% of all cars on the road with an upgraded exhaust system is running the legal setup. Wow. When I had my S2000, the cat failed, and what the guys did was cut a hole in the side, pull all the material out, and then weld it back up again. Jesus oh. Christ. Another... Yeah, the... What was that, a super fast car? Oh, no. by a... 612. Oh, this these is are the, the guys coming filming at Podium. No, this is Podium Place. They've been doing a film shoot at, at a local hotel. They're bringing oh. all the cars back. Uh, we may as well use this as a chance to play yeah. Podium Place, guys. If you want to come somewhere and see some cars that you probably yeah, yeah. can't afford, this yeah. is the place to be. He's good. He's Absolutely. good. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so a decat then. So you did, have you decatted a, what's your M2? Has that got a sports cat on it? I'll go on, keep reverse. I don't know if we can get this on camera now. No. We just want him to be in shot. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so decat or sports cat. Okay, so 
when you're in the car scene, I think, and when I say the car scene, I tend to go with more the affordable cars, not the supercars. Yeah. Scene. Um, DCATs are a very popular modification that doesn't cost much money that adds in the region of 10 to 15 horsepower to your car when you have a dyno run and also makes your car sound louder but more deep and throaty so a very popular mod for obvious reasons Um, a lot of people do it and have a very much screw you police attitude and they just do it anyway because again they've got their friendly MOT tester and I don't want to give an incentive to do it but most of the time they're going to get away with it because no one really goes under the car and checks right so if you see a car breathing fire often they've had their cat removed that's why it's possible to do so yeah and you um, can smell them from a mile away you can smell them. so yeah. again because we know i can stand behind a car and i would just know it's decat straight away yeah, just yeah because i'm tuned to that right so a sports cat would be the next best way to do that 200 cell 100 cells some are allowed for track use some are allowed for road use but the rules are even tighter you're only really allowed an EC approved sports cat. And unless I'm not mistaken, Miltec are the only company that make them. It's crazy, right? More companies need to, but every exhaust company I've spoke to about getting a custom exhaust made say, hold on, we'll need to go check if ours are EC approved and then I never hear from them again. Oh, I know. So more okay. companies need to get on the train about of crap of making it. these EC approved sports cats. About a crap so of it, sports cats. They're, they're, they're approved, aren't they? Well, they don't make them especially, for focus. Especially the type that go on a mini. Akrapovic. A crap of it. I've heard oh, there is a video on the Akrapovich website of a dude from Akrapovich Why? saying you just, how you say it. Yeah, but it, it, it. It just sounds a bit of crap. It just sounds a bit crap, doesn't it? Yeah, but that's, 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 that's how it's said. Duh. This video is not sponsored by Akrapovic. Ak- it's Akrapovich. <laughs> so if you do tune into this video, why? Let us know in the comments. We George, how do you uh, say Michelin? Hold on. hold on. Well, again, Michelin or Michelin or... Michelin. Michelin. Oh, Michelin. Michelin. <laughs> or if you're watching this on our new TikTok I would video, put in the comments below, is it a Krapovich or oh, no, 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 I'll tell you what. During this uh, podcast at the end, so you guys can watch till the end to find us, uh, find out and we'll do it, yep. we will make a video for TikTok on your page okay. on the pod yep. asking your viewers to respond with video responses to that. It's okay. Like, like so Porsche. if you're watching this podcast, Porsche. then this TikTok will already be live. Yeah. Go find their TikTok and then you can do a video response and let us know how you'd respond. Yeah. Uh, re- you know, yeah. 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 Michelin. Okay, yeah. so, so that's, that's number one. Mod number one. Yeah. So number two, I would probably go with window tint being yeah, a big especially thing. front window tint, because that's can not you allowed guys at tell all. Tell me what's legal and what isn't with window tint. There's a so they've got the little light meter thing, haven't they? Yeah. I can't remember what the I can't remember what the limit are. But you're not allowed to tint on the front at all, are you? Um on the top you are technically especially you, the mirrored ones so <laughs> yeah cars come factory standard with a tint right yeah. because it protects you against the, the glare on the oh, yeah, that's, course. that's normal yeah. but what a lot of people do is they tint their front windscreen not realizing they already had a factory tint yeah so the rules are that it goes 75 percent light on the front 70 percent on the sides b pillar forward but b pillar back you can have it as dark as you want that is the way it is that is not incorrect um taxi rules might might differ but yeah. if you already have, for example, a 5% tint or a so-and-so tint on the windscreen and then you add tint to it, you make it worse. So rule of thumb, don't do anything to your front windscreen. Yep. Um, make sure that you've got 75% light coming through your driver and passenger side. Nice. That looks very much like the one that Matt Armstrong just crashed. Um, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> Matt, I love you. A lovely little black Lambo just went past. Looks very much like yours. Um, and, but the rule of thumb is that people often tint the front windows because they want privacy. While I understand why they do it for a privacy reason, it can be very frustrating um, for us because we have to answer it so often. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're selling drugs and stuff, it's cooler to have black windows. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or, yeah. you know, when you're writing an email at 90 miles an hour in the most Yeah, way, exactly. It's much yeah. easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So but I just don't get it. Uh, d- like, do these people, like... I'm sorry, but this is one of about four sunny days we've had in the UK, and we're nearly, we're basically in August. Yeah. So, what, it, I find the car a dark and miserable place anyway without tints. Can you imagine what it would be like in a car with tinted front windows in the UK? Mm. It would, that, it's just, it's depressing. And then when they get it done really well and you get air bubbles in it, oh, it's really good, isn't it? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> right, so, decap, tints, right, okay. So um, far, I'm all right, I think. Yeah, um, so that's obviously a, a big one is exhaust. So, obviously, we've done, we've covered decats and we've covered covered tints i would probably go with number plates being a massive one as well because there's a lot of things with number plates that people don't often give credit to and while it might sound confusing it is pretty simple yeah but people seem um, to make it much more confusing um, than it is. i might this might be an issue for me 
Okay, well, I'm not going to judge, but I can see your car from here. No, that's a press car. That's fine. Okay, the press yeah, that, car. That, you'd hope that is good. The, 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 the Mini I had with me last week at Myra. Yes, it had illegal spacing. It did. Yeah. Oh. Okay, yeah. so that's probably the, the 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 worst, most least exciting illegal way to have your car. Yeah. That's actually very common. So I'm not going to pass judgment, but again, illegal spacing is not allowed. That So but here's the thing, right? So yeah. the true story, that car uh, actually passed its MOT with planes mm -hmm. like that once. Okay. Um, but I do generally, because they're show plates, they're only ever on when I'm off the off road and not driving on the public highway. I swap them over with some plates that are in the boot. Uh, See, this is what people do, and this is why sensible police officers don't listen to Craig when he gets pulled over and says, "Sorry, officer, they fell off. They're in the boot." He's yeah. not stupid. Yeah. So, so legal spacing. I guess the big one at the moment in in the more high performance sports car category is just not having one on the front at all. I'll, I'll just break it down really simply. So yeah. th the key is letters all need to be black, right? Yep. So a lot of people have these red spacings around them, blue spacings, colored all kinds of stuff that has to be black letters. They have to be, as you know, yellow on the back, white on the front. That's just the way it is. It cannot be tinted. You can have raised lettering, so you can have 3D and 4D, but they've got to be secured. You can't have any website slogans or custom names at the bottom of the plate. It's got to be the maker's See that maker's one. address. I saw that on, on one of your short forms, and that mm -hmm. freaked me out because I have pretty much always had some kind of like either the name of the car or you know you go to these like you know the, the look plate at Tim companies. Schmees or yeah, he's got so a, that like means a, everyone at Tim's but again this is, is the problem if you're constantly seeing these big creators with a big following with illegal setups whether they did it on purpose or not most of the time they that was news to me the, the slogan on the bottom yeah so That's what you can't have for example is Kerry's hair salon what yeah. you could have would be I don't know Vosper's Ford and then their postcode but the other important thing to remember is that about a year and a half ago, I think the new rule came. So you need BSAU 145E at the bottom right-hand corner. A lot of people put their plates in these like covers yeah. that they clip into. Those covers then cover those numbers and then they get pulled over. And they're like, well, officer, why are you pulling me over? Because those things aren't visible on your plate. They need to be there. It's literally the rules. Um, that's, that's I appreciate amazing. it might sound a little bit boring, a bit of a broken record, but the rules are really simple. You need the BSAU mark. You need to have the maker's postcode. Your letters need to be black and they can't be tinted. It's pretty simple. How about making the, um, you know, the screws that hold the number plate on the little covers? How about making those like a black one so it looks like, uh, you know, the, the middle letter of an E or something? Can People do, do that? that too. Yeah. People do that too. But play, um, actual placement of the number plate is quite important too because a lot of people have them in their windscreen and a lot of people have them curved around the car. Now, one of our common comments was Alfa Romeos have them curved. Yes, they do. That is true. But they're on a plinth so they can be seen by the AMPR cameras. Whereas I used to have mine bent all the way around. And we actually did a video, whether you choose to include it or not, it's up to you. But we did a video where the AMPR camera looked at my car and couldn't read my plate because it was curved around. Uh, so this is why it worked so well, I think, is because I had all these illegal mods unknowingly. And Owen was able to use me as example rather than someone else. Yeah. And then we slowly changed my car back to OEM plus, but completely legal. And still, arguably, quite a nice looking car. Yep. For its age. Um, you haven't, I can't see the markings on that rear number plate from here. Oh, yeah. oh that's a shame. That's a shame. <laughs> They're definitely there. <laughs> Adam did his job. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, all right. Okay. So that's news to a lot of people. Yes. For, for me, it, uh, the, I, got, I knew the spacings one. Mm -hmm. I get so many comments and I've had that plate like that for like 12 years or something. That's not an excuse, I know. But anyway, I did change my, I had the very similar plate on my Porsche. I've mm -hmm. got M44 XPG rather than M4 XPG. And I had them placings in yeah. a different way. And I got so much grief, I put it back. But me. they're so common. It'd be very easy to think that that's okay. And I, I don't, I don't have an issue with people making those mistakes because again, if, if your mum and dad have got illegal spacing, then why wouldn't you get legal spacing on your mm. car? You wouldn't know any different. And it's not something that people talk about. Mm. Number plates isn't exactly exciting. So unless you're seeing our videos, how else would you know? Because I think previously before GCM, the DVLA expected you to have read it on the website. Yeah. And, and who's going to do that? 3D and 4D plates. Oh, do you what? think they should be made illegal because they look stupid? I've had three. Oh, I was going to say, I bet you two have just I've had, had them. I've had them all, but I've, I've been <laughs> What's through... What's 4D, by the way? I've been through the... Net. How can be... What's... There's also 5D now. Oh. What? But there's only three dimensions. That's stupid. I know, right? So I've had 3D and 4D. 4D, personally, not a fan at all. I, oh, I'm stupid for that. 
Big ups exclusive registrations because they've hooked up me up with plates and they're into all the plates that we've had in those videos. We're What's the there. difference between so 3D? Are they the big fat letters? They're the big fat letters, yeah. What's the, 4D? 3D is like jelly, gel stuff. 3D is the jelly ones. The 4D ones are the big ones. The Lego. Quite looking. often actually fall off the plate and go down the road and hit people's windscreens. Oh. Yeah. Do all kinds of stuff, hence the rules. Uh, I've gone back to standard now. So yeah. okay. I prefer standard. Okay. Yeah. Go see. Well, He's maturing. He's going getting maturing, taste yeah. as he gets older. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. That's a, uh, what's that? Is that three? Isn't it? Two more? Oh uh, God. Um, I don't want to call it the same as window tin, but chameleon tin is on the rise. Chameleon is tin that is the, huge. The blue and red tin on the front of people's windscreens. Yeah. Oh. Um, I know that that is technically window tin, but chameleon tin is a very separate issue that I think the police are like a mirrored there, finish, yeah. like mirrored sunglasses. like Patrick's <laughs> Patrick's glasses. Yeah. <laughs> technically, it's legal if you have the right um, light coming through. Right. Which makes it awkward because a lot of companies are actually advertising as legal when it's not because mm. they're not aware that their factory standard windscreen had a tint on it already. So a lot of people are getting their chameleon tint done, getting stopped by the police, realizing they were illegal because the companies didn't know. I've, I've got a question for you. And I know that, listen, I know you're not the police, you're not Owen, but uh, it's relating to a, 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 a um, upgrade um, that I might or might not have one of my cars. Um, <laughs> one of your cars, Flex. <clears throat> no, well, that, I've got. To, I've got. I own one car. The other one's heavily financed. Um, uh, yellow D daylight runners. Interesting. Okay. Um, the rule of thumb with lights, both on the front and back of your car, is yeah. that at no point can they replicate an emergency services vehicle. Okay. You can't have blue ones. So um, no, you can't. But then so. The way that we often do our videos is that we will put a mod on my car in yep. order to use that as example. So neons, for example. Max Power Days, we all remember neons. Yep. A lot of the time now, people are seeing these RGB lights that sort of go around mm -hmm. like that. And, yep. and as a result, you could argue that those are okay, but the flashing is also quite dangerous. So when it comes to lights on the front, I've had yellow. I've had the green fog light lenses that yep. I put on my car. Um, the general consensus is you should stick to standard but what you shouldn't be doing is having anything flashing yep. or replicating emergency services vehicles. So that's that's the premise of that one. And that's, okay. Because I guess it's, because in my head it's, I mean, it sounds like it's a se semi gray area with some rules that you've just come across or you just said, sorry. Um, but it's interesting because like daylight runners are quite a new thing, aren't they? In, in on For cars on the road. In the past, you'd have your side lights on as the light sort of got dull and then you'd have your headlights on. But nowadays, every new car has... Audi R8 was the first, I think, wasn't it? Was it? The, yeah, with the daylight runners. And so, yeah, so I guess, yeah, it's interesting. It still applies, I guess, because if I've got yellow lights on my car in the middle of the day, it still could come across as... Going on that topic, can I just, while we're talking about lights, say yeah. something that I actually found out from Owen the other day. So we were talking about um, some mods on my car that Owen now approves of compared to what my car was set up before. And if you have, for example, a halogen light system on your car, let's just say an old school Ford Fiesta, yep. what you can't do is put an LED bulb into your halogen head unit. Ah, okay. H head unit, uh, headlight. Light unit, headlight. Well, again, so your car needs to be set up to cope with it. So for example, if you get a really powerful, um, not so much an LED, but if you've got some proper projectors in there, they then give off heat. Of course, your halogen setup isn't designed for that and as a result could cause the fire kinds of stuff that's why they have um water jets that come out and shoot your headlights ah so again it, it's all about knowing these rules and they're so confusing this is why we make the videos because it takes one video of being like did you know that you can't put your led bulbs inside a halogen setup yeah here's why yeah. and then you know a hundred thousand people watch it and then you've got those people correcting that mistake yep and it, again it might seem so menial but it just takes one person to get into an accident because they were driving at night and their headlights just shut off. Yeah. And they hit a deer and then... Yeah. But talking, I mean, I've just, we all go abroad a lot. I've just come back from a trip in France and it's still, as far as I know, you, you get the French back, you have to have the breathalyzers and the uh, UK stick on the back of your car and all this stuff, the reflective vests and stuff, whatever, um, which I do carry. But there's also, you still get these these uh, um, uh, sticker kits that you're meant to put yeah. on your headlights to, to change so that you, you don't dazzle oncoming traffic because obviously you're now driving on the right-hand side of the road instead of the left-hand side of the road, which is such an ancient thing. And 
and I say that because the car that I was driving, which is my M3 Touring, as soon as I come off the train, it's it comes up on the computer saying, you're now in a right-hand drive country. Do you want to change the headlights? Yeah. Well, yes. So straight away, they're changed. But I know and I fear that if for whatever reason I got in an accident or something happened and I didn't have those stupid things that would make all they would do to a modern day, a modern headlight system is completely ruin it because of all the sensors and the way they work. And those things are designed for 25 year old cars with halogen lights. Um, so it's, it, and I know that's not your expertise. It's not Owen's because it's not the UK, but it's just one, again, it's one of those things. It's like modern technology comes in, but yet that's still a regulation and yeah, a yeah. rule. And I always think to myself, what if I did get stopped by the cops? I bet you they could do me for not having those stick kits. No, well, again, well, I think if you had caused a crash off the yeah. back of someone being dazzled by your lights that you didn't abide by the rules that they said you needed to and you signed a form saying you would, yeah. then there you go, they've got the argument in court. But it wasn't that long ago that in France you had to have a spare bulb kit as well. Yeah. And if you're running like, you know, Laser lights. Laser lights. Which You're not going to get a spare bulb kit to fit laser lights. Uh, but. You guys are very privileged, though. You've got to think there's the majority audience don't travel to France and don't go out of the country yeah, yeah. ever. Mm. And you guys have been away so often. And even I'm sat here thinking, well, I've not done much of that. I've driven in other countries, mm. but I've never driven from this country to France, to Spain, and so on. Mm. I actually cycled my bike to uh, Ibiza, funnily, quick, quick Wow. Lights, but didn't have any headlights. <laughs> But the reason I'm saying it is that As Joe, yeah, just cycled to a beef. But Jesus, yeah. my dad made me earn my first car properly. Um, wow. But the, the reason I mention this is that most people don't know that. So I've always thought we should maybe make videos on here's five things you didn't know you needed if you're going to go to France. Yeah, yeah, definitely. because these things aren't known by the common audience. Yep, take the V5 with you. Exactly. I mean, I, I don't know these things. I hear people talk about them. But because I've not been, it's not been hammered into me. So it, I yeah. find it interesting just hearing what you're saying. Toll tags. But my headlights are custom. I've had them built and they, through just pressing a button on my app, I can switch to left hand or right hand. Yeah. But that's what I was saying. That Modern cars now, you get off the train into France and the car says, you're in France, I'm going to change the headlights. Amazing. So it's, but again, you're very lucky to drive such a wonderful car. No, yeah, of course. Big ups to my best mate, Lee, who also has an M3 Toro. Oh, yes. He loves that thing. Yeah. <laughs> loves it so much. Yeah, what a car. We did it an hour, you know. I know, I know. It's going well, your... to be a long podcast today, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. We had, um, we had, I'm going to have to take a break in a minute. Old man needs a wee. <laughs> <laughs> Got, coffee's gone right through me. Um, I think we're nearly there on our list, actually. We were going to we were gonna um, ask you your thoughts on EVs, but we're probably... Oh, no, no, let's, no, no, I want to hear you. Your... got to the bottom of that list already. I want to hear your thoughts on EVs. I want to... Yeah. All right, because... Right, let's stop a minute. I'm going to go to the toilet, come oh, back, and then okay. we'll carry on. Oh, okay. Just, just, just... Literally. What? I'm just going to... How was, how was the toilet bed, all right? That, yeah, well, can, we, can we cut that bit out? Which bit? Well, well you're going to the toilet. Uh, look, I've got, I've, oh, got, sorry. I've got light-coloured shorts on and it was getting a bit dodgy, so I need to go to the loo, all right? I'm just checking like my TikTok screen. account, George. Explains the anus hole wipes behind you then. Yeah. <laughs> <They're having big laughs> cream. 52, 52 views on my TikTok. Compound interest. Boom. That is going to... Oh, I'm going to be... All right, that's going to... Can I make a TikTok live on your TikTok right now on the pod? Go on then. Can you open up your app and let me do one? Yes, absolutely. I think this will be funny to anyone watching. So this is, all, this is this is this is. So form. for this one, I don't right? even know where the app is. So if, you, if you're listening on one of the audio <laughs> podcast platforms, you need to head over to YouTube and watch the video on YouTube. And while you're there, make sure you hit the subscribe right, button. So as well. I'm now taking Joe's phone. Yeah, I was going to say I don't know how to use it. TikTok, you definitely so. do. Right. Okay. So right. What's up to all the Joe Achilles audience here on TikTok? I am now live on the podcast, the Driven Talk podcast with the main guys, as you know. But the reason I'm doing this is you may know Joe from YouTube and his podcast here as well. But I'm a little bit of a short form creator and I wanted to try and get him into this short form stuff. So we are now live on the podcast that I'll show you now. Um, it's Patrick over there. As you can see, we have one camera right there and we have the main man over there running everything and all of their wonderful sponsors, Michelin included. Yeah. But these two guys, up until now, didn't really see the value in TikTok content. And I'm hoping to change their mind. Right, bear with um, So live on the podcast, I've jumped on here to hijack the Joe Achilles channel just for the time being. But anyway, you're not gonna see me after today because I'll be leaving and going home. But I wish you all the best, Joe. But what I wanna see from you guys is jumping in the comments getting any questions in the comment section that he can answer so that it gives him lots of topics and exciting things to cover. But all the same, this has been George stealing the Joe Achilles podcast, but for now, let's get back to actually filming this because this isn't about me. Well, it kind of is, but this it's all about you, George. It's, it's all about you, It's mate. about them, not about me. Anyway, cool backdrop. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> See, that's well, it. Well, I hope you're as confused as I am, Nick. Now you've got like yeah. a billion views coming in there. Wow, well, yeah, a million, I think, on that one. Yeah. There you go. Thank you, Matt mate. Watson, again. straight away. Up Brilliant. Right, let's, yeah. So, so okay. now we're back um, after, <laughs> after a, um, a comfort break. Yes. You know, an old man we. Yep. Um, so, next thing is, uh, we thought we'd just finish off by chatting cars. So, All you're right. in your, your very, very modified... Ford Focus. Yes. What's the, the engine model? Five cylinder, like? two point five liter turbo, which is the best engine. What? What? Uh, it's a power upgrade or? Um, yes. Yeah, so it's a it's a stage two. Um, we have the bits to go stage four plus. So it's going to be six hundred and five horsepower, four wheel drive. Wow. In the region of zero we to sixty. We did do a podcast two and on half seconds. We did a podcast on the difference between stage one, two, three, and four, and we ran out. We we couldn't work yeah. it out beyond about stage yeah, two. Yeah, it's a bit like three D, four D, five D, and so on. Yeah, it's yeah. just marketing, yeah, it's really, isn't it? Really? It's just fast, right? It, it's just fast. Aircon, um, aircon works well. Uh, well. Okay, so I got the car. The condenser was broken, so you'd fill it up, and it would lose all of its gas in a matter of seconds. So that's like pig because the light was on, but the aircon was doing nothing. I took out the fuse, um, and I may or may not have told my sort of form content audience that we took the aircon out. Race car mods. Yeah. But no, there, there is aircon with just the condenser don't work. Okay. And there's no fuse. Um, so we're going to fix it at some point. Yeah, it's on the right tires, though, look. It's on PS4s. Great yeah. tires. To be yeah. fair, it's only run PS4s, actually. And that, that was before I even worked with Michelin. Mm -hmm. But no, I just, I just think they're great. And funny enough, I must say this. So the Mac 1 Mustang that I've sold a few weeks ago, Michelin, uh, Misha... Oh, excuse my M Misha took it round um, a racetrack with me, and needless to say, he said they were too grippy and it wouldn't skid. Ah, which is, yeah. is a compliment. Not living up to the Mustang, <laughs> so yeah. sliding into so a tree. I was like, was that now. And he was like, I can't. They're just too. They're too grippy. So yeah, great tire. Nice. So um, you. So I was just about to ask cars that you've owned, dream cars that you'd like to own. So you had a Mac One. Yeah, had a had a Mac One. So I'll start. Had a Volkswagen Looper as my first car. Um, mm. Do I have to be polite on this pod? Because there's quite a funny story around that. Go for it. Yeah. Um, Pat can always edit it out. My horrible friends, when my car broke down and we decided, or well, at least my mum decided when I was younger, that it wasn't worth fixing. Um, wrapped in cling film on it, um, covered <laughs> it in flour, threw eggs at it, and wrapped it in more cling film and took pictures and tagged me on over the internet. Um, so that car went to the scrap page. I feel so bad for the scrap man. But 75 quid I got for that. I was a 1.4 Lupo and the interior had mods. And what I mean by mods was it was just sticker bombed. That was it. Cool. That was, nice. That's all it had. What's yes. your, what's, what's your dream? <laughs> what's your dream car? Um, if, if you, to buy with all your TikTok revenue. Yeah. If you suddenly, if TikTok was suddenly paying you 10 million a year. A fully built Mark IV Toyota Supra. Oh, that's oh. why you got so excited. Yeah, on that one, it's, but. it's, there are loads of cars I like, and I think we can all play this game, you know, for hours, but I think we've all got cars that we like. I'm just being, I'm a big Fast and Furious fan. But for me, the Mark IV Super is just it. With the 2J, just the noises. Are you a Fast and Furious fan? Well, um, I've not actually watched any of them, but no. I hear they're quite you, good. You okay? Yeah. Well, no, I went, I, went, I, went, I went to Tokyo, right? And they're all talking about Tokyo Drift. And I'm like, I haven't actually seen any Fast and Furious. Off the podcast earlier, he said, I'm going on a fantastic trip to, um, to Japan. Yeah. And I'm very, very jealous. And... For me, I get really excited by Japanese food, ramen. Yeah. Again, I'm a massive Pokemon geek. And yeah. of course, the Japanese car scene. Yeah. And none of those you mentioned were remotely exciting for yourself. You just, oh, I want to go film. No, no, I love Japanese food, like big yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, really that, have, so yeah I'm like, I'll go to Japan in a few weeks' time for the second time this year. <laughs> Is it all booked in, in stone, ready to go? I got the invite last night. So, oh, I'm so uh, jealous. Yeah. Whoever, Sorry. if you're watching, can I come too, please? <laughs> yeah, Fast and Furious. So you're, so you're a ah, super guy. So, so not... See, I quite like not the the last run of the Super, the one before that with the well, actually no, hold on it, the, the Mark the Five, one. which yeah, is the, the A ninety, yeah. the BMW. I like the last yeah. pop up headlight ones. Yeah, okay, nice. What was the black one that went past us? So that was a, to my knowledge, nineteen ninety six Mark Four Toyota Supra. Okay. Well, you even got the, he's not the year. L, no, it was L Reg, so ninety four. Oh, no. fair. Well, well okay. yeah, I That's didn't the, notice the Reg. Yeah, but I just went out the shape. So the, the, the shape didn't change between ninety four and ninety six. Yeah, but I guess that's yeah. No, but, I don't, in fact, no, in fact you well, knew the year by the registration plate. Yeah, but that's all I know. I don't know what okay. mark it was. He's closer to the window. He can see the reg. I didn't pay. I couldn't um, see it. And what about your view on, on electric cars? Actually, Joe's a not, big as, fan. not as negative as I think my audience might assume, because I'm a massive petrol head that loves the smell of coolant and, and you know, um, your engine running lean or rich or whatever. But all the same, I have a friend that has a Tesla Model 3 Performance. Mm-hmm. 
a lot of cars I've been in are fast. That's the only one that I would describe as sickingly quick. Yeah. Um, as in, like, it's so jerky and so quick that it just makes me want to vom, and I'm a really bad passenger. So, amazing car with amazing technology. I think there's a lot of potential. It's just a shame to see them depreciate and hemorrhage money as much as fast as they have. And I mean, his car was 70 when he bought it, and I think now it's retail 19. Yeah, but that uh, 19 in two and a half years. But I think we all know residual values tells us what the car's worth, mm. and I think that's what that's uh, so. Uh, um, okay, yeah, electric car, interesting. I mean, I like electric cars. I think where they're going is interesting, but I'm also yeah. not going to sit here and act like I know enough about electric mm. cars to contend with the people that are likely to know and you know the viewers. Um, but no, my, it's been positive. But I understand the hatred from the petrol heads. I get it. But I think there's we're in a world where there's position for both. Nice. Quite, I wonder a question about modifications on electric cars because it's not mm. really. Can you de- can you decat one? Well, I, I don't know. If, <laughs> yeah. Wait. I don't, electric cars don't have catalytic converters. Are they going? No, you don't. Well, at least you mm. wouldn't. Have Did you ever include <laughs> Eclipse into these, or do you just tend to leave it raw? Pretty raw. Okay. Well, the reason I'll have to explain then. Uh, a friend of mine with his blue, it's been wrapped blue Model 3 Performance, has a Alibaba carbon kit on it. Ooh. And everyone loves to rip him when he leaves the car show saying, go on, mate, give it a rev. <laughs> He's so fed up to the point that he now says it about himself with the window open. Yeah, I'm waiting for that. Come on, give it a rev. Yeah. Come on. But you can modify one. It's just not as cool. But you're going to expect that. If you turn up to a car show in a Tesla or an electric car, I suppose you're going to expect. So they don't do electric car meets, to my knowledge, do they? No, no, that'd be fun. All of six people that might be. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, though, in, in, in all seriousness, though, I guess the, I, I was trying to be serious, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Serious Let's talk point. about the Capri and the Mackie Mustang. Well, well, yeah. So, so you know, you if you spring forward 10, 15 years, the car mod scene, there's bound to be some element of that will be based on EVs and. Yeah. How do you mod an EV? I mean, you make it go faster with a software upgrade. That's going to be quite tricky because I'm sure a lot of the softwares will lock down. You can adjust things like ride heights and suspension and spaces, I guess, like you would say. Body kits. Lots of body body kits. Mm. So the aesthetics are there, but a lot of the stuff you do in a petrol car, you know, exhausts and Mm -hmm. remaps and and all that kind of stuff is missing. But I'm sure there will end up being an EV. No, like I said, I I think there's a place for it. But I'm one of those people that wants to have a car that lasts. And I think I oh, will be the old man that has the Supra covered in a cloth yes. in a garage somewhere. Even if it's illegal to drive on the road, I'll still have it as my sort of my trophy. This is the life that I had. This is what I loved when I was growing up. This is a bit of me. Similar to the people keeping their Pokemon cards now and whatever it is that's special to them. I think there will be a time where these will be outlawed. And that's why I love having a car mm. that is so much value for money. I mean, that cost me four grand. And I've just sold my Mac One Mustang, and I enjoy that more. Yeah. So I mean, that that says it all. Electric cars are great. And there's so much room for electric cars. But you're talking to a petrol head. I just have to have one and the other. Yeah. I couldn't have just an electric car. Fact. I just couldn't. Your friend, if you don't mind me asking, because we talked about this on the last podcast um, about ownership of EVs um, and the amount. Alexio, big up to you, man. And the amount of people that own them through com- is his is his a company car no so he just private he just just financed his tesla the same that anyone might do he's just a sensible guy you know he's into his properties he's just good with his money yeah a couple years older than me um loves his car yeah he's he's had the the 140i's and all of these fancy cars but he just made the choice on a tesla and it's a shame that it's lost so much money yeah but funny enough despite that he's still going for the upgraded model next okay so oh that's interesting because i think he loves it you worked out what was it one in 11 it's electric car that, owners. That wasn't me. That was a, that was a, 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 a report SMMT did. Yeah. The one in um, EVs on the road a are private. private. The rest of mm-hmm. uh, corporate. Warning. Interesting. Fun enough. Um, question actually. I'll, this is probably quite interesting. So having worked in car sales, I learnt what is the UK's um, car that is owned by the the lowest earner. Could you tell me what car is driven by the UK's lowest earner? I'd guess. What a new car. So or? what new car is driven by the UK's lowest earner? I've just never forgotten and I just wondered if you'd know. Oh, I'd like to say something like a Dacia Duster or Sun Nero, but they're not cheap anymore. So, and I'd like to say a Ford Fiesta. We talked about them a lot in the last podcast. Great car, really sad to see it go. Might have changed now because I I've, don't, haven't been there for two years, but okay. at the time it was a Nissan Qashqai. Because it's oh. one of the best selling Motab cars that often in that particular industry, you found that some of the, the lowest earners being motability customers, yeah, yeah. 
were um, actually driving cash guys, even though they were a great car. Oh. It's just a sad representative because it obviously isn't but necessarily it's a true. It's a free car though, right? Yeah, it's, it's a free car, yeah. Um, but I, I guess it was just a strange statistic that we heard through working at Ford. One wow. of Nissan's best, in fact, I think it is Nissan's best selling car. Wasn't it built yeah. in the UK for a while and it's not now? It's, it's a fantastic car. Yeah. It's a really, really good car. But again, it, it's just a random one that I'd remembered, a random stat. Well, then my, my eldest know. brother's got one and I call it the Kumquat. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Nissan Kumquat. Nice. <laughs> can, I, um, can I ask you a question before, as we yeah. move towards the end of the episode? So yeah. money's, m- money's um, obviously not a factor. What car do you wish you hadn't sold? And following that, what car do you aspire to have at some point? Completely owned, not financed. To both of you. Uh, so start with Ped. Uh, I wish I hadn't sold my Honda S2000. Okay. So you, I'm assuming you'd keep that forever, would you? Yeah. Well, yeah, I sold it. And I think I've told you this story. So I, I had it. I had a, I had a Mitsubishi Shogun because I had still a horse box. Oh, and then yeah. we bought a lorry so I could get rid of that and, and get a two-seater again. And a mate of mine had bought a used car from a friend based in Ireland and got an amazing deal. And I said, oh, man, your mate can't find me a, a Honda S2000. And he went, well, I'll, I'll ask. And at the time, he came back and he said he's found one. It was only like three years old. It was 14,000 quid. And at the time, they were like going for like 21. And he said, it's a, it's mate's rates. It's a good deal. How the amount of money now? I'm like, some money. I'm, like I'm having one. Yeah. Right. So I, I had it. I ran it for four and a half, nearly five years. I put... Best part of 100,000 miles on it. I absolutely drove the I wheels off. You could say 100 grand into it then. Also. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I, I drove it every day. Mega, mega car. And then when I went, to, I chopped it in for an Audi TT uh, and they offered me five grand trade in. And for a TT as well. A, a, a TTS. Okay. Better. Yeah, better. Um, and on my way back from the dealership, I got a call from the dealer. He went, oh, hi, um, yeah, Mr. Greaves. You know, we've just offered you five grand for your Honda S2000. We've just done an HPI check and it's a, kite, uh, a Cat D yes. uh, insurance. <laughs> car and i'm like what you didn't know that you should have cat d it, what <laughs> i know well yeah back in the day it wasn't. Ups, yeah uh, uh so we can only offer you three so they only gave me three grand for it so i should have just kept it mm. and ran it as a track day yeah. mega car awesome car okay so you wish you'd have that one mm. you got it back uh what is your dream car then that's not on finance that you you could own oh, i'm gonna be cliche and say that i'm mclaren f1 as a as a halo car but that's that's a ridiculous thing so i don't know it would be probably something really dull like an rs4 or a... i'm surprised you're not doing what everyone does is gt3 rs um yeah I, well i suppose I, i'm trying to be more practical but i would love a gt3 i wouldn't have an rs i'd have like a, okay. a gt3 992 gt3 but as a practical or no actually no a turbo s cab has your um before i asked joe the same question has your opinion on cars changed as you've got older or do you think you just have a more mature outlook uh because i find my opinions on cars changing as i grow up my opinions probably changed now i drive so many cars mm. my my yeah, expectation of what is good has got better yeah. it has got a higher a higher bar for a car to be good okay. but also weirdly it also makes me appreciate lower cars as well never let you drive as, mine then as to how good they are <laughs> i think you'd love it you know i think it's great but yeah. joe same question goes to yourself so is there a car that you've had that maybe you regret selling no i don't think so i've just had all that time to think about it i was like nah definitely nothing i really regret and to be fair, what about I'm, your old uh, M140 or your ah uh, yeah. The, well, the, I think the difference with me and you've you've owned a lot of your cars in the last let's say ten years. I've financed a lot of cars, mm. so when they go back, they're either at the end of their finance agreement or whatever. So I don't really feel like I ever own them. So I've never had that. You feel disconnected from it, don't you? Bit, I think, and yes. it's not quite the same. I had that with the Mustang; it didn't feel like mine. Yeah. And then when everyone complimented it, I'm like, "You're just complimenting Ford at this point. It's not my car. It's not my hard work. Yep. yep. It's just a monthly payment that I can afford. Right? E- exactly. That you Whereas know is going to disappear. That, I take it personally because I've yeah. put that together myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so well, it's different. I'm just saying. I think if I sold my M2, which I have been considering, but only because that's where a lot of my money is tied up in. Um, I, I I would regret it straight away because I have such a bond and love it because I actually own it. Um, don't owe a penny on it, it's mine. Uh, so yeah, I don't regret, but maybe I would if I sold that car. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of what I aspire to own, I am that, whatever you're describing, there's that boring person, maybe two, three, RS. Yeah. Three, two, three. Not an RS, no, an RS I think for the road's just silly. I mean, uh, it's just- I've never driven either. I yeah. just know that they're cool because I watch videos online. Yeah, I mean, they are. You'd have a manual GT3 Touring. Uh, yeah, it'd be a GT3 Touring or um, one that I always forget about, 
more recently that was at, at Goodwood is the ST. If it was a dream car oh, yeah. and money, object, I think you said a car that I could actually see myself maybe one day affording or having, it would be a a, a used um, yeah manual GC3 Touring or GC3. I'd like an old uh, like a an old timer 911 in the garage. Yeah, use it all the time like a rent sport or something mm. like that. It, like a resto mod sort yeah, of one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I envy your car knowledge because listening to the way that you guys describe the cars that you'd like or the cars that you've had reminds me of you know watching Adam C's videos is he's so switched on and he knows these cars so well yep. to the point that I'm like oh Astro VXL oh it's a course oh it's a Golf yeah but like people like yourselves and Adam C in particular just know so much yeah often these car names are just going over the top of my head I've heard of them yeah but I couldn't tell you why you'd want one like I couldn't that, well, have you, you driven a GC3 I've not driven any, I've never driven a supercar. I've been passenger in many. I wouldn't even class it as a supercar. I've never driven anything like that. I, I remember driving an Aston up my dad's drive once because my dad's friend was an idiot and let me ever go. But that yeah. was before I'd even passed the You've test. never driven a supercar? Never driven what a supercar. you did this afternoon? Going to Ben Fowler's house. What are you going to be doing? <laughs> uh, I don't know, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Big, big up Ben Fowler. I don't know. But no, um, irrespective to cars, I'm just going to yeah. see him on the way home. But no, I've just never driven a, a supercar, and I don't want that to be a track day experience. No, no, I, don't, no. Yeah. I'd rather that. I'm insured for any car I wish, but just I'd rather just be a friend, and be like, "Come on, here you go, first try." Yeah, and I'm a sensible driver. I've proven that with my my socials, but all the same, I've never done it yet. Yeah, interesting. No, I'm just really chuffed that you guys invited me on. So thanks for having no, me. No, so he's, he's, he's like so a guest that asks questions. Yeah, I know it's great. It's, it's, it's the tism. It's the ADHD it's man. The tism. <laughs> it's the tism. Yeah, just keep it going. There's never a dull moment, right? Yeah. Mate, oh. Well, that, when we we were together at Myra last week and and said, look, why didn't you come on the pod next week? And I'm so glad you've driven up because it's not a, not a, a, a short it's distance right. that you've driven, is it? It's a long distance. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty long. Yeah. It's, it's worth it though. It's good to network. So, Sometimes the opportunities that you might give the least credit or the least hype for often genuinely give you the most dividends. And not that things need to return anything to me, but sometimes the things that I've maybe doubted the most have often offered the most. Yeah. Like, I didn't know what to expect from, from Michelin. Honestly, had so much fun at my. Oh, Myra, it's good fun. Yeah, it just. It real just, It was captioned in the email as just, you know, testing some tires. And I had such a good time. And the content's mega. I can't wait to upload yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't yeah. wait. Especially the testing on the little water roundabout. The, the, that was very cool. I love it. Very, yeah, very, very cool. educational. I'm looking forward to it. No, and should we um, make some TikToks? We should. Are we going to do them live so <laughs> that they can put them in as the intro or the outro? No. I reckon you should record it's, them. It's like teaching just, granddad. Just to clip. I reckon leave the cameras recording and just put the funny bits in at the end for those that are still paying attention. <laughs> well, some TikToks. George, mate, it's been an absolute yeah, Thank pleasure. you very much for having me. Cheers, I appreciate buddy. it. Cheers, Cheers buddy. Cheers, Joe. Thank you, George. And uh, you. guys, make sure you hit George up in socials and watch his content because it's really, really good. Better to do, yeah. <laughs> and we'll see you on the next episode. Yeah. Oh, we're Cheers. doing the TikToks now, I think. Let's do TikToks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>